So main begins to execute, okay? Fine, we, we kind of know that now. So the first thing is a function call into ping, okay? Function ping is defined here. It has no parameters. It gets invol invoked. It gets, uh, it gets to execute its code. Um, now, eventually, it's going to call pong and uh, vice versa. So this can be a little bit of a problem that functions call each other, but uh, this is an endless process, and we don't want our program to behave like a runaway train. We don't want our program to essentially lose control over these calls. So in order to stop at some point, I introduce global variable named shot count. How many shots do you want? Like how many ping pongs you want to have in a single session? And I initialized it uh, to, um, uh, apparently, I initialize it uh, with zero value say, OK, this value will be counting shots. And I have a hard-coded value of 6. And say, when you play 6 shots, and then if, uh, if the shot count is greater than uh, 6 shots, then return. And I use this if statement that says, uh, <laughs> just like look at the number of shots um, in both of these functions. And say, as soon as you reach that threshold, 6, stop. OK, just return. Don't do anything else. Just keep returning. And so when I do this, uh, 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 as long as the shot count is not, uh, not greater than 6, the return statement will not execute. Instead, I go to the next line, and both ping and pong are like mirror image of each other. Right? The only difference is that they call each other. Ping calls pong, and pong calls ping. Everything else is exactly the same. Uh, they do the same thing. Right, so uh, uh, so um, the next statement in in each function is that I increment the, the the shot count. Plus plus means add one, and remember it. Okay, so every time I make a ping or pong entry in this entire uh, process, I increment my uh, my my variable, which is a global variable declared right here. Uh, and uh, so its value will grow, right? Its value will keep growing, will be getting, uh, will be, uh, getting uh, bigger. And eventually, as, as soon as it gets more, uh, uh, greater than 6, uh, uh, each function should begin to return, as opposed to continuing on and uh, making other calls. So um, that's pretty much the arrangement of these functions. And uh, when you have this, uh, the series of calls like this, we say that these are recursive calls. Because when ping calls another function pawn, pawn actually may call ping again. And therefore, on the stack, what's going to happen is this, right? When I switch back to our notes. Right? So right here, if I try to picture this, uh, what's happening in my program is that I have this uh, function named ping, right? And I have this function named pong, like this. And I have function named main. When I think about the execution of this program, I know that main calls ping, right? And then ping calls pong. And it just keeps calling like this and like this, and like this. It just, they, they all keep calling each other. And eventually, they realize that the counter reaches a certain level, and they all just be, begin to return. So, but in computer memory, right? So this is my program in memory, OK? So this is executable text. This is, by the way, a section with, our, with the short count, short count which is a, a variable which gets incremented with each shot. This, this is global, uh, global memory. And uh, then let me actually erase this. Um, just erase that for now. OK. And go back to this again. So we have main. OK. We have ping. And we have pong. 
okay? And what happens is that the first thing that happens, main makes a call to ping. Main, of course, gets its stack frame uh, when it is just invoked. Before ping is invoked, its stack frame is constructed on the stack, ping. Uh, if it had its own local variables, this is where ping would get its local variables, right here. Uh, then ping realizes that the shot count is still zero, increments it by one, so the counter becomes one over here, where zero becomes one, and then it makes call to pong. Before call to pong happens, pong gets its own stack frame in case if it needs local variables, and it's stored on the stack. And then it looks up this counter, which is one, which is not greater than six, which was the condition in, in that code, and it keeps going, right? So it then continues to call ping, and what it does, before ping is invoked, again, it gets its own stack frame. So each function call, right, ping again gets on the stack, uh, and uh, it allocates a completely separate set of local variables, and now ping, as a result of this uh, ongoing activity of making function calls, ping and pong will get, because they, they still uh, keep going, and they will get multiple stack frames on the stack. Eventually, eventually, we hit this condition, like every time we make a function call, the first thing that we actually do, we increment the shot count, right? So as we make these calls, and the, the stack keeps growing in this direction as we make every single function call, what happens is that the counter gets incremented, so it becomes two and three and four and five and six, and then it becomes seven, which is greater than six, and then we begin to return. From here, from here, what happens upon return, we already had this discussion, when you return, stack frames simply get destroyed and we return back, right? So this stack gets destroyed, this is destroyed, this is destroyed, right? This gets destroyed, and this gets destroyed. And eventually, we return, we return from all of these function calls back to the main function. And we're going to uh, print game over and uh, basically return out of main. And of course, as we return out of main, this is gone, right? So we're actually completely done and we return. And so I just want you to realize something interesting with respect to, to, to this early version of our program that when I run it, right? So when I go back to say debug and I'll start and continue, you see that our functions are, are calling themselves repeatedly and it's interesting that without even having a, any kind of loop structure in our program, simply using call and return mechanism, which is, a, which is very closely involved with functions, of course, we can have a repetition, right? So call and return controlled by some condition creates an opportunity for us to make uh, uh, you know, something repeat. Uh, as, a, as part of our uh, program execution. All right, so this is uh, kind of an interesting example, and I think we will revisit it again. I am not expecting you to completely grasp every single concept here, but I would like to get an idea that things like this are possible, okay, with, uh, with, uh, with functions arranged like this. Now, I would like to uh, cut this uh, and paste it on top of uh, this. Just rearrange this program a little bit. And then uh, uh, ask myself, what if I decided to keep Pong on top of Ping? Uh, and if I say uh, build again, oh, I'm still running, so let me exit out of this, right? And if I go and say uh, build again, I run into the same problem. This time what it says is that, look, you're trying to call ping, 
but it happens to be elsewhere, and I don't know what it is. So I cannot compile any code which will be associated with making this function call. So the solution is very simple. And the, the, the moral of the story is that it's not just one function declaration that I need. Um, I need both of them. Both of these function prototypes are very desirable to have at the top of this program. Then I can do things like this. I can just take my functions and place them anywhere I want. Because I told you, each single function, when it gets, you know, like this, this is fine. When functions are compiled, each single function is completely isolated universe, like, a, like an island in the ocean which has its own habitat, which has its own set of variables, which uh, controls its, uh, uh, you know, making decisions when it wants to return. And uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, this is something that we want. However, we don't want to lock ourselves into placing functions in such way that they always are defined before we can make calls into them. And there's this extremely simple solution uh, that you simply say, declare function names and parameters, essentially use these function prototypes at the top of your program. Uh, and uh, uh, everything uh, will compile because this is the information that the compiler needs in order to make these function calls.